President Trump declares war on Twitter. Minneapolis protests turn into looting and lawlessness. And Ann Inheat Coulter is back. President Trump signed an executive order on Thursday allowing the Justice Department and other government agencies to begin looking at social media platforms like Twitter in particular to see if they are in actual violation of Section 203. Now, Section 203 basically makes a differential between a platform and a publisher. In other words, the phone company would be considered a platform. And because they're a platform, they cannot be sued if an organization like the Ku Klux Klan uses the phone company and telecommunications to communicate with each other devious plans and nasty things that they might be up to. So that's what Section 203 was designed for, was to protect entities like the phone company, like cell phone companies, communication companies that... They're simply providing a means of communication. What people do with that communication is not on them. Well, that's what Twitter and YouTube and Facebook love to claim and lay claim to that they can't be sued if there's hate speech on their platforms because they are a platform. The problem is they don't act like a platform. And that was the case that the president was making. They act like an editorial board. In other words, they decide that's against our guidelines. They decide we don't like that comment. They can take comments down. They can restrict users. They can stop things from being posted. They can shadow ban you. They can bury you. They can tweak the algorithm so that your stuff never comes up anywhere. Well, then that's not an actual platform. You're a publisher. And once you act in an editorial fashion, then you are demonstrating that you have a bias one way or another. doesn't matter whether it's a bias toward the left or a bias toward the right. It's a bias, and once you do that, then you are responsible for the content posted there. Then you can be sued. And, of course, Twitter and Facebook, they got to where they are by promising, hey, we're here to let you tube to let you have free speech, to Facebook what you want to Facebook. And that's not what they do. And it is going to be proven that they do, beyond any shadow of a doubt, nobody denies this, including on the left, that they really do target conservative voices and voices that they don't agree with. And it's not about something that could be right or wrong, even legal or illegal. No, no. Nay, nay. Thus, uh, you have people that tweet about, you know, illegal drug use. Their tweets don't get taken down, though they're in violation of the law. But boy, tweet something in support of Donald Trump, and that's it. You're done. They will remove you. So, this all got came to a head when the president put out a tweet regarding the fact that uh, there could be voter fraud involved in mail-in ballots. And immediately they put a little fact check on the president's tweet saying, no, there's no proof of fraud doing mail-in ballots. Now, what was their go-to source to discredit the president? CNN. Really? The Clown News Network? You're kidding me, right? No, that's what they used, CNN. And so that just kind of torqued the president. Because there is voter fraud. In fact, when he was doing his his uh, executive signing, uh, allowing the DOJ and other entities to start looking into Twitter, some reporter asked, now, Mr. President, you are saying that, that the governor of California is giving out ballots to illegal aliens, and uh, according to his office, he's not doing that. They're only mailing the ballots to registered voters. To which the president responded, don't be stupid. I, you know, I love this president when he does things like that. So don't be stupid. You're putting a ballot in somebody's mailbox. You don't think that those ballots are being harvested? That somebody goes out to their mailbox and before they've even gotten to it, somebody else has gone through their mail, taken their ballot, using it themselves or selling it, using the 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 actual ballot itself and with relatively inexpensive equipment can actually duplicate it, replicate it, mass produce it, stuff the ballot box. Come on, it doesn't even pass the laugh test. And he's absolutely right. 
and he just put that reporter in their place. But it incensed the president that Twitter, quote, fact-checked him. And that, of course, is because people like Mika Brzezinski, the pole dancing stripper who masks masquerade as a news journalist over on PMSNBC with her husband Joe, you know, the guy who had to leave Congress because they found a dead intern in his office, and he pretended for years to be a conservative, and now he's out of himself as the true libloon that he actually is. Well, you know, after he busted up Mika's marriage and took Mika for himself, you know, occasionally she likes to pontificate like she's like smart or something. No, she is living proof why prom queens should never be given jobs of importance and influence, ever. That said, um, you know, she was saying that, Twitter, you've got to do something. You have libloon reporters at outlets like Newsweek writing articles and op-eds that uh, the president is going to be stumped. You know what that's translation for? He's very effective at Twitter. Because I'll be honest, I don't use Twitter. I I've got a Twitter account. I think once a month I... I, I, I put something on there, it might get a dozen views. I just, Twitter's just not my thing. But we know that for the president, that's like his hobby. That is like his national pastime. I think he tweets more than he plays golf. And that's fine. I, I got no problem with that. He, he loves it. And I understand in the world of communication as a broadcaster that Twitter is a necessary part of doing business. It irks me that uh, news commentary now centers around, oh, did you see what the trend is on Twitter? No, not really, and I don't care because I know it's an artificial trend. I know it's a platform that's very liberal-friendly, but it's also a platform that the um, caretakers of manipulate. They themselves create the trends and then make you think that the whole country is in love with Joe Biden, that the whole country doesn't care about the sexual allegations against him, that the whole country hates Trump. See, it is manipulative. It is not an open platform with no bias. It is a regulated publisher. Therefore, they are not entitled to the same rights as, say, the phone company. Well, after the president signed that executive order, you would have thought that Twitter might have backed off a little bit. Nah, they decided to make things worse when on Thursday night, or I guess I should say in the wee hours Friday morning, the president tweeted out about what's happening in Minneapolis, that when the looting starts, the shooting starts. In other words, he's calling on the mayor, get control of your city or I'm going to send the National Guard in to do it for you, which some of us have been wondering for the past 24 hours, where is the National Guard? Why is order not being restored to the streets? And I'll have more to say about the Minnesota rioting in just a moment. Well, Twitter didn't remove the president's comment. You have to click to see it because they have deemed it, quote, violent, that it is advocating violence. You're really going to keep sticking your finger in the eye of the president? You're, you're really going to... I know you are, you are hoping that the Ninth Circuit, some court, is going to swoop in and do this. And you do realize, and the president's been very restrained in this area, you do realize that not only does he have the executive authority to do what he did yesterday, he has the authority to step in under the war powers and just take over your company. Remember, Barack Obama took over GMC, the General Motors Corporation. Remember that? Just took it over. Took it over. He, he, he took control of a privately held corporation, fired the management, fired the president, etc., etc., put his people in, most of whom had never been in the car business in their life, and the country nationalized General Motors. And there were quasi-conservative commentators at the time, like Bill O'Reilly, who thought that was a wonderful idea. It saved GMC. Really? Really? There wasn't much balk or pushback other than voices like mine. So if Obama can take over General Motors, Trump can take over Twitter. And please take over YouTube and Facebook while you're at it. So that's what all this is, Twitter warring is about. And so we'll wait to see what the president's next move is.
So when is protesting, rioting, lawlessness, and out of control? May I give you the example of Minneapolis. The death of George Floyd was awful. We've all seen the video multiple times. What those police officers did was wasn't over the line. It was it was borderline criminal, if not outright criminal. And they do need to be prosecuted, not just fired. So I I I I have no problem in protest. In fact, it's a constitutional right that we have the freedom to air grievances. But what's happening right now is not protesting. It's outright lawlessness. You have property being destroyed. You have people being hurt. Uh, there are even fatalities as a result of this. This has absolutely crossed a line. It is no longer constitutionally protected protesting. It's outright rioting. And the president is absolutely right, as are most Americans right in being outraged over, why isn't this stopping? You know, any support that we wanted to offer the protesters in Minneapolis went out the window when they started burning things down, stealing. You know, how is stealing property that doesn't belong to you property from businesses owned by black businessmen? How is stealing their stuff and you taking it home and using it yourself or selling it to somebody else, how, how is that honoring the memory of of someone who died in a speak-out against police brutality. It's not. It's criminal behavior, it's lawlessness, and it has to be stopped. I got into a discussion today, a friendly discussion, with a liberal friend of mine who wanted to make the point, what is about you conservatives? You know, when we peaceably protest, you know, like kneel during the national anthem, you think that's awful. Now this kind of protest, you think it's awful because it's violent. So it doesn't matter whether we're peaceful or violent, you just don't like our protest. Now, let me, let me help you out, you Libloon deranged friend of mine. Protesting. The, the right to speak up and speak out. I have no problem with. Let's take Colin Kaepernick. I have no problem that he feels that there's injustices in this country and he wants to speak out against them. Fine, do that. It's his right. But when you spit on the symbol of the form of government, the form of, of our way of life that allows someone to go literally from the bottom to the top being ridiculously financially compensated for playing a child's game. Well, if Colin thinks that there's another country on this planet much more equitable and fair, fine, move there and see if they will pay you millions of dollars to play a child's game. We're the only country that foolishly does that. And now look what we're happening during these shutdowns and Major League Baseball. They could be playing right now. There are Little League programs and AAU teams that are playing right now with limited fans or no fans. Grandparents that can't go see their kids play ball, but the kids are playing. There are teams playing. Major League Baseball, you ain't gonna pay no fans, and you're not paying us the same amount of money. We're not gonna play. We're not, no, no. So, Colin Kaepernick feels that there's all types of injustices in this country. Yet, if he lived in any place else that had a caste system in place, which he accuses America of having, well, he would be stuck at the bottom and he would have to stay there his whole life. Or if he was at the top, he'd be there his whole life. America is the only place where you can start at the bottom and actually get to the top. You can. You can. And if he wants to make millions of dollars playing a child's game and then take that money and benefit the causes that he believes in, more power to him. I'm for that. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to like it. But I'm for his right to do that. So that all said. I will support Colin Kaepernick's right to protest. What I completely, vehemently disagree with is him symbolically spitting on 
the symbol of our flag, which represents the very freedom that he's protesting because he's not free enough. But yet he has the freedom to do that. And again, because there are many of us in this country, a majority, that disagree with his chosen method of protesting, it was the voice of we the people that spoke up that caused the NFL to make the decisions that it made. It had nothing to do with an edict from the president, and the president simply weighed in with his opinion. But crossing the line, shooting, killing, stealing, that is just outright riotous behavior, and it has to be stopped. And you would be advocating the same thing if a group of rednecks in Alabama started burning a town to the ground, shooting, killing, and stealing because they demand the Confederate flag be put back. Yeah, I went there. Bipolar Coulter. You refer to her as Anne. I call her Anorexic Coulter. She's back. Anne Coulter is living proof of what happens to past middle-aged women with faded fame as they attempt to still be relevant and call me pretty, or in her case, call me smart. Well, Anne in Heat Coulter, who can't make up her mind who she's more hot for, uh, Chris Christie or Mitt Romney, and she, you know, dates people like Bill Maher because, you know, they come from the same ideological background, right? Well, we're told no, but... Maybe. I've said for years that Ann Coulter is a fake, fraudulent, phony conservative. See, the problem is, there are so many like her on the left, she didn't stand out there. And one thing about Ann, she is so narcissistic, she is so self-absorbed, she wants to be it. She doesn't want to be just one of many voices, she wants to be the voice. So she couldn't get that in the liberal media circles. So she flipped and she went hardcore right and immediately got the attention of conservative media. And we catapulted her to the top. I mean, you know, writing and saying things like how to talk to a liberal if you have to. I mean, it was, it was, it was some good stuff. And I'm not saying that she doesn't research out things. She does, but for her... It's not because it's her core value and what she believes. It's a script. She's just a, a method actor. She's just a well-researched method actor. And right now, the, the liberal press is in love with the fact that she came out, I believe it was on Sunday, and called Trump a retard and a moron and blah, 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 blah. And he could have stood up and been a leader during, you know, uh, this, this COVID pandemic crisis and he's not what you mean because he's not spouting the deep state narrative i thought you would be against that and oh that's right you're not because you're for mitt romney see when ann coulter initially threw support behind the president that had nothing to do with the fact that she agreed with him or even thought he could win even when she said that on bill maher's show she was asked, hey, who do you support out of the Republican candidates? When she said Donald Trump, everybody laughed. And she got the reaction she was hoping to get because at that point, nobody, other than me, nobody in, in conservative media circles had picked Donald Trump. Ann Coulter never picked him over an ideological conviction that he could win. She picked him to be different, to stand out, because it would immediately garner her invitations on every talk show to be able to explain her answer. And it would let her sell a book or two. And then when Trump's people picked up on her and had her started to open up Trump rallies, she got on board, which she now says he lied about the wall. He didn't lie about the wall. He certainly has built more wall than Mitt Romney ever would have. So she's a fake. She's a fraud. And I'm not going to give her any more attention than what I am to say right here. Um, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd said it best. Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> Just replace the name Jane with Anne. Hey, that's it for today's rant. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and a like. Spread this to other social media platforms. Ah. <laughs> uh, 
YouTube is working overtime to really mess with our algorithm. So again, I need your help. I thank you for your help. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. Uh, smack the bell and click the word all to get notification of my next rant.